let us think about the art question we asked last week. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, the air is not satisfied with hearing. That's from, that, that is from the Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse eight. Is it that Jennifer Packer's paintings are meant to depict the weariness of mankind? No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. All right, so let's head over to Sarah with the artist, Jennifer Packer. Hello, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, AJ, for that introduction. So here we go. Let's play from the start. So Jennifer Packer is an artist uh, living and working in New York City. She was born in 1984. And there's not a ton of information on her personal life, but she is known for her expressionist portraits, interior scenes, and still lifes. And she's really interested in authenticity in relation to her painting practice. Uh, and the models for her portraits are often friends or family members. So how each slide will work is the painting that we're highlighting will zoom in and then we'll see it in a gallery view afterwards. So blessed are those who mourn, Brianna, Brianna. So for Packer, a painting can honor a life. Her largest painting to date is connected to the death of Brianna Taylor at the hands of the Louisville, Kentucky police. The photographs of Taylor's home that surfaced in the media and on which this work is based strongly resonated with Packer. She said, quote, I'm interested in the codependency of humans existing in spaces. I'm interested in the environment as much as the figures that sit within it. So both Taylor's killing and a grand jury's decision not to indict the officers sparked widespread protests to this day. And uh, still no one has been charged for her death. Uh, Taylor's family and many in her community continue to fight for justice. And so here you can see how large of a piece it is in the gallery view. In this work, uh, two seemingly fused figures function as the central subject of the composition, but Packer's highlighting of the knee of the figure on the right establishes a distinct focal point within the work. With its hushed grays, blues, and browns, the work suggests a certain vulnerability within the, these two subjects. And Packer's often used drawing as opposed to painting. She's used drawing as a place for heightened experimentation. Her abstract forms and frequent use of a highly limited palette uh, combine to create drawings that are both distinct from and connected to her paintings. With its two figures staring directly out from the canvas, this large dreamlike work invites the viewer into their private world almost. Uh, Packer's predominant use of this pinkish red palette is really only disrupted by these flickers of green paint and the white canvas behind it. And this unifies the painting, which seems to be as much about the two distinct figures as the, the one so she's interested in humans in spaces and that relationship. So you can see with this piece, there's multiple plants, a bicycle, and even the faint outline of a cat. And through this kind of washy drip-like painting technique, which yields these incomplete figures that are based on individuals close to her, Packer limits the viewer's access to the subject, suggesting that they need some sort of protection from exposure. They can't be in high definition. They have to be kind of washed out as a way to protect. So the body has memory. This portrait um, is of Packer's close friend and fellow artist, Eric N. Mack. And it's one of several that she made with him as her sub subject. In this work, uh, Packer has painted Mack facing the viewer with crossed legs under with one another. Implicit refusal uh, of the viewer's gaze underscores Packer's desire to get at something beyond just a straightforward likeness of his. She once remarked, quote, I used to say that I don't trust representation. I've never seen a painting that looked real to me, but I've seen ones that felt real. And so here she uses, she expresses that feeling or sensibility through this experimental and somewhat unlikely use of saturated color bathing Eric entirely in red. Say her name. So nearly two years after Sandra Bland's death while in police custody, Packer made this painting in her memory. Grappling with profound grief and not wanting to make a spectacle of the circumstances of Bland's death, 
Packer chose to paint a still life to express her inability to reconcile herself to the visceral loss of someone that she didn't know personally. And so of her floral paintings, Packer has stated that this piece highlights something that's been true in my practice overall, which is this appreciation for painting from observation and also understanding the emotional resonance of things. Carefully composed using these geometric zones of color, an alternative to the very idea of portrait painting, a genre which Packer's often associated with. Um, but through the painting subject, a man lying alone on a bed, the work avoids a straightforward representation, but it also evokes a complexity and a duality of feelings. Uh, the painting is actually a direct reference to uh, Titian's The Flaying of Marcius, which was a painting in 1575. And that painting is often interpreted to represent the freeing of the spirit from the physical body. And as in many of Packer's paintings, there's this implied intimacy between the artist and the subject. And here that's resulting partly from the half-dressed figure's torso resting only on a bare mattress. So Packer began to experiment with monochromatic painting in 2015 as a way to give equal importance to negative space and the adornment of the environment. Again, her fixation with the environment. Um, using primarily one color became an editing device for Packer, allowing her to eliminate details that felt inessential to her while emphasizing presence through color density. So the painting's title may suggest that when certain formal elements such as tactility are impaired or distressed in a painting, other aspects like light and shadow can be foregrounded, as we can see in this picture. So here's another example of the monochromatic style that she used. Toby is painted in different hues of pinks and red. And what's interesting about this piece is that you can see the faded outline of an additional sketch, specifically down at the feet around here. Um, and potentially this is something that uh, Packer has drawn and then erased or drawn over to create the final version. And it's maybe as if to say there's a multitude and there's multitudes and different layers to a person. So here's an overview of her exhibition happening right now until April 17th at the Whitney Museum in New York. And combining observation, improvisation, and memory, Packer's intimate portraits of friends and family members and flower paintings highlight this emotional and physical essence to the lives that she depicts. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.